You know, I've never interviewed someone best known as a video vixen, but if you're going to do that, you might as well get the top video vixen of all time. Bobby Brown, best known as the girl in the cherry pie video. She's released an autobiography called Dirty Rocker Boys, Love and Lust on the Sunset Strip, and it captures that moment in time, late 80s, early 90s, well through mid 90s, this very decadent time in Hollywood history and music history. And the list of people that pop in and out of this book, you know, Janie Lane, of course, from Warren, who she was married to, and they had a child together, but not only him, you've got uh, Tommy Lee, Dave Navarro, Kevin Costner, Rod Stewart's in the book, Leonardo DiCaprio, so many great stories. Of course, there's a dark side to this because the Hollywood thing just consumed Bobby Brown, and unfortunately, she went through a really tough time with addiction, but came out the other side to tell her story and uh, she's with us tonight or she would be with us tonight but someone just knocked on her door so we're waiting for her to uh, get back but she'll be back in just a second and then we'll have our conversation okay, and she's back and wearing high heels evidently bobby brown welcome to the show you know Thank i you. was in a barnes and noble and i saw it there and the new release is your book and i thought holy mackerel she wrote a book <laughs> <laughs> i mean i just didn't see that coming and i really knew virtually nothing about you aside from your acting work and and some modeling work but life story nothing and you know i'll say this you know you went through some tough times but if you had only hung around striper none of that would have happened <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> That's a different story. Probably not. So I want to go back to the very beginning because I think the first time that America took notice of you was Star Search. You were on that show, right? Well, um, besides the Miss Teen USA pageant, was of course very brief. Yeah. Right. And as the story goes, and you tell it so well in your book, Janie Lane from the band Warrant is watching Star Search, sees you, and says, "That's the girl I want to have in my new video." Yeah. Did you have any idea? that you were going to be in the video as much as he's in the video? They didn't tell me anything. I didn't show up for the first uh, audition. I just blew it off. And then they called and were like, okay, she never showed up. So I went the following day and met them all at Jerry's Deli and just walked up and they were like, okay, you have the part. And I was like, okay. Um, okay, great. And they didn't really tell me what it was going to be. They said it was going to be a sexy video, blah, blah, blah. They gave me the song. Um, to listen to. I listened to it on the way home, and I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then when we got to the set, that's when uh, it was a three-day shoot. That's when um, I kind of started to fight with the director because that's when he started to tell me all of his great ideas that he had for me. And I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. I'm not <laughs> doing that. Because the stuff that I did was agreed, but there was so much more that I was like, no. They wanted me to get naked in a kind of whipped cream, just all kind of stuff. And I was like, I'm not doing all that. So we fought the the entire weekend. So the scene with me on the couch, on the, on the lips couch, right. kind of where I look like, it looked like I'm almost going to punch somebody in the face or cry. It was probably because <laughs> I just gotten in a fight with the director. <laughs> so the most you'd let him do was turn the hose on you. Yeah, yeah. and let me tell you, that was like a car accident in your face. <laughs> that was not fun. My eyelids peeled back, so I turned my head really quickly, and I went, "All right, we're only doing one take of that. That's that's about it." Because um, uh, that's a lot of pressure to someone's face. Well, that car crash in your face paid dividends because it wound up being one of the most popular videos on MTV at the time. I mean, I seem to recall it was on every hour. Yeah, it did. It really did uh, do me some justice as far as like getting my name or face out there and. It was number one for quite a while and did air for quite a long time, yeah. And I remember at the time there was all this outrage over it, you know, like this was the most degrading thing that had ever been done to a woman on film. But if you yeah. watch it now, it's, I mean, it's sexy, but it's kind of wholesome. It's cake, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Compared to what's going on these days, right? Yeah, nowadays you'd be twerking in the video. But even going back to, like, 1983, Kiss had their Lick It Up video, and they had women in rags eating chicken off the floor. So I don't know what the yeah. controversy was all about. I will say this. Having read your book and read all the stuff about your relationship with uh, Janie Lane from Warrant, who's sadly no longer with us, he comes across as a nice guy, obviously he had his uh, problems and his dark side. Yeah. But uh, I went out and bought a Warrant Greatest Hits record after reading your book. You did? Yes, because I cool. honestly, all I knew was uh, Cherry Pie, uh, right, which, right. which I'm guessing is something that frustrated the heck out of Janie Lane, <laughs> I would suppose. Yeah, it did. I mean, he, 
you know, came to terms with it towards the end there. But for a while, you know, when you're a songwriter and you write all the songs and all the music, you know, he kind of wanted to be known for something more, you know? Right. And, um, but, you know, he was okay with it towards the end. But for a while there, he was kind of resentful towards that. You know, you write about it in your book, 1990, 1991, all these bands, Warrant, Motley Crue, uh, you know, Skid Row, they're all on top of the world. I mean, that hair metal scene is about the biggest thing going. And then in 1992, bam, Nirvana comes along, wipes everybody out overnight you tell a story about Janie Lane going to the record label and they're literally taking his picture off the wall to put up a picture of Alice in Chains yeah and what's really sad about that is because as I'm listening to the songs on this greatest hits he's more than cherry pie he's a great ballad writer and he could have rode that wave and just been a songwriter for hire yeah you know and the, the funny part about that is and I agree with you and that was my suggestion as well um because I always felt like, you know, give Warren a break and go away and then come back so, you know, people want to hear from you. Like, don't force right. yourself down people's throats because then you're done. And, um, and you know, he'd always be like, you don't know, or, you know anything about music. And I'm like, no, trust me. I know what's going on. Like, I would offer him advice, and I said, you know, you always have your ability to write and do this and that. But when somebody's a, a rock star and it's a full package and they get that kind of inspiration and attention, like, they don't really want to settle for just being a writer sometimes. We're talking with actress model Bobby Brown, of course best known for Warren's Cherry Pie video. We had a little trouble with the uh, cell phone there, so we're kind of coming back here to a little bit of uh, Janie Lane singing a, a tune called I Saw Red. And to open this interview, I played a couple of songs that had videos that featured Bobby Brown in them, and I wanted to talk about uh, one in particular because... I've heard you do a lot of interviews, but I've never heard anyone bring this up, so I want to be the one to bring this up. Times Two and their cover of Simon and Garfunkel's Cecilia. Yeah, that's so funny. Yes, I did do that. These two guys who look like they're from the street over from New Kids on the Block or something. Did you know that Paul Simon not only enjoyed their cover of Cecilia, but he actually sings background vocals on it? No way. I did not know that. So technically, you could say you're in a Paul Simon video. <laughs> something else you did around that time married with children yeah i was in three or four i think well it's one of my all-time favorite shows and it's constantly being rerun can you tell us anything about uh, what it was like working on that show um it was cool it was awesome um everybody was really nice and um it was just chill really um, everybody was really super laid back and they really liked me. So they, you know, called me back quite a few times, but, um, yeah, they were really just super chill and, uh, mellow. You know, they weren't like, um, stuck up or weird or, you know, I don't know. It was fun. It was fun. And we're talking with actress model, Bobby Brown. Her new book is dirty rocker boys, love and lust on the sunset strip and getting back to, uh, the sunset strip scene. Obviously we had talked about when the changeover happened, and all the hair bands had to go away and grunge came in. I'm assuming that the club scene in L.A. changed and there was a whole new breed of people showing up. Um, that didn't really start happening until later, you know. Um, for a while there, it was just kind of all the same people, all of our friends. Like um, a friend online, he's an old paparazzi guy who used to film, uh, used to always be outside the club, has lately been posting all the old videos from 20 years ago of all the situations of nights that I've written about in my book on my Facebook page. Huh. And it's such a trip to see the videos from like 20 years ago. I'm like, Oh my God, that's, you know, the one story I'm talking about in my book, like perfect timing for him to like yeah. find these videos and post them. But it's so amazing to see the videos because it's like, it's just cool. That time was such a decadent time and it's never really been that way again. And it's, it's nice memory. Well, and obviously there are some not so nice memories connected to that scene, and you're open about that in your book. You talk about your meth addiction. You know, so many people didn't make it out of that scene. You know, so many people passed away or they were yeah. just consumed by Hollywood, and uh, you somehow powered through it. What do you think enabled you to overcome your addiction when so many people couldn't? Um, I mean, not to toot my own horn, but I do think that I'm a good person, and I do... My intentions are always good. They're never, 
you know, you know, intentionally trying to hurt anyone or be malicious or whatever. If anything, I've, I've ever just been ignorant, you know? And, um, and I just think that eventually after doing it to death and just having no point purpose, you know, having a daughter, not knowing what I'm going to do. Like I just had to either pull myself out of it and hopefully that something great would come along or I was going to break and I wasn't going to let that happen. You know, like I just couldn't, that just wasn't my style or, or who I was. And, um, you know, regret and like that kind of thing sucks. (laughs) And to live that way for that long is like, I just couldn't, I couldn't bear it anymore. And I had moved home and my mom suggested I work at Subway and I just thought I was going to freaking break. <laughs> like I went crazy when she said that. I was just like, are you kidding me? Like I just couldn't believe it. But you know, it was like, really, what was I going to do? So, you know, I just had to make a decision and start from the bottom and work back up slowly, but surely in persevere because, and you know, and it was rough too. And it took quite a while, but I mean, I just say never give up hope because eventually, as long as you're grateful, I think, you know, you'll get rewarded. Well, I think you're getting rewarded now. Yes, I am. You know? I, I definitely, I'm definitely grateful for my life now. I mean, I've never been happier um, at this point in my life. It took me 20 years, but, <laughs> you know, I am very, very grateful and happy. You know, uh, there's so much that's in your book that, uh, you know, I like to think of it as a juicy tell-all. Mm-hmm. And, and unfortunately, with FCC regulations, I can't go into it. But that, in a way works good for you because if anybody wants to know all these juicy details they can just go buy and book and read all about it for themselves exactly if people want to catch up with you online or uh, well do you have a website i do i have a I have a few i have a bobby jean brown fan page on facebook i have um, a personal account which is attached to that page at bobby jean brown 92 on facebook then i have um my twitter account at bobby jean brown and I have a store online that uh, I sell uh, my own line of jewelry and clothes and um, a vintage section at bobbyjeanbrown.net. I see. And also, of course, um, I, you know, if people want the book, they can go to their local bookstore. Uh, yep. They could go to Amazon. The book is yep. everywhere. I mean, I walked into Barnes & Noble, and there it was on, on the new releases. Are you doing any book signings or anything like that? I think I'm going to do one in my hometown in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, um, within the next month or two. Um, but other than that, I don't know, not sure because they haven't mentioned that, but, um, I just been doing, you know, press tour with radio and, and, uh, personal appearances and stuff in town. And I went to New York for two days, but I don't know if it's going to be any, any more than that. I'm not sure yet. And you know what you've talked about, uh, cause I've heard other interviews with you about, uh, subsequent books, like maybe a sequel book to this or a different kind yep. of book. Yep. And I have two. I would love that. I have two suggestions for you. Okay. One, you should have some kind of a beauty tip book, because I've never heard of anybody who was a meth addict who looks as good as you do now. I mean, so whatever <laughs> you're doing, you know. Thank you. You know, maybe not awesome. maybe not work at Subway, but eat at Subway. I don't know what the secret is, <laughs> but uh, you look fantastic, so that should be a book. Thank you. And the other one, I'm playing the part of, like, your agent here. The other one <laughs> should be... A Cherry Pie Girl's Guide to Classic Metal. I know that sounds very corny, but a, a trade paperback book where, you know, you talk about maybe 25 bands or so, and you've met all these guys, uh-huh. and sort of a light, frothy book about these are, you know, these are the songs I like, talk about that scene, and it sells huh. itself. You have a picture of you in the Cherry Pie video, you know, the one where you're roller skating and you're about to trip over the wire. You know, yeah. the guitar chord. That's the cover. It's a white cover. It's a trade paperback. It's twenty five ninety nine. And who's not going to buy that? Wow, that's a great idea. I never would have thought of that. But oh, I do want to mention before I let you go here, because we're going to be running out of time in about a minute and a half, but uh, okay. you have a TV show, Ex-Wives, yeah, Ex-Wives of, Rock. of Rock. Yeah. It's on the Fuse Network. I'm not the kind of guy who would sit and watch a reality show, but I went to check out one episode. I found myself watching six episodes. So this is my meth, this show. And uh, I hope you guys come back for another season because you left on this big cliffhanger because one of these ex-wives is like, whoa. Uh, One of them is like, there's a lot of sort of betrayal and two-faced kind of action. Oh, oh, blue. Yes, yes. 
And I got yeah. I got wrapped up in that whole story. I'm sitting here going, what the hell? This is what happened. You sit down to watch one, and then you watch like six of them. I know. It's awesome. It's addicting. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that gets resolved because it looked like uh, you guys weren't going to be friends anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. hopefully. We're always friends. We've known each other for 20 years. But, man, there's some things that really piss us off for sure. Yeah. Piss me off anyway. It sounds like it. Well, I want yeah. to thank you so much, Bobby Brown. Once again, it's a great, great book, Dirty Rocker thank Boys, you. Love and Lust on the Sunset Strip. Just scratch the surface, and everybody should run out and get the book. And, Bobby, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You, too. Thank you so much. <laughs>